Good morning. We have a nice cold wind this morning and a very subtle sunrise. And I am here at a lookout in Hamilton, Ontario, trying to capture some of the escarpment and buildings in the distance. Now, I have promised you a tutorial of sorts on how to use a long lens or a telephoto lens in landscape photography. And so that's what this is. All right, so <laughs> let me show you where I am. I am overlooking the city and in the distance there's the escarpment. There is the Niagara escarpment that runs right through the city of Hamilton and it gives us two very different elevations throughout the city. So I have a sun rise which is not actually a sunrise in the distance. There's a low band of cloud, which means we just have a subtle glow on the horizon, which is really, really beautiful. Now, some people might think that to use a telephoto zoom, all you really want to do is zoom in on something that's far away. And that is definitely one of its functions. But in landscape photography, one of the other functions that's really, really helpful with a telephoto lens is that you can compress the scene. You can <clears throat> get objects that are in the scene to almost look like they're sitting on top of each other instead of like really far away from each other. And that's what I'm doing here. There are some buildings in the foreground, then the mountain, which is what we call it, the escarpment elevation, and then just uh, different lands in the distance. And from where I'm standing, they look, they look pretty neat. But when I put on that telephoto zoom, it's gonna look like it's all just stacked one on top of each other. So I have ISO 100, F8, and 0.7 seconds. Now, because it's so far in the distance, my f-stop doesn't really matter. So I'm choosing f8 because it's a good middle f-stop that won't give me any distortion and uh, the picture will be just right. Now the other good thing about a telephoto is that you may want to get something that is beyond your foreground. So in my foreground here, I have trees and they are quite close together. So it's a bit of a challenge for me to get my subject, which is way in the distance, with just a normal lens or a wide angle lens. I would have the trees and everything in the way. But when I have the telephoto zoom, and the one I'm using right now is the 70 to 300, and I'm going all the way into 300 because it just eliminates all the clutter around and it just zeroes right in on my subject, which is just fantastic. I don't have to worry about moving trees and it just kind of, uh, simplifies the image it uh, the telephoto zoom and it doesn't have to be a zoom any telephoto lens it can be a prime lens which means just a fixed lens at one um, 
at one focal length, say a 200 millimeter lens or a 100 millimeter lens. Uh, mine is a zoom today, but um, a telephoto lens is fantastic for getting minimal pictures, especially in landscape photography, and especially if you can get yourself at a bit of a distance from your subject. going to take the same image with my wide angle lens just so you can get a bit of an idea of how different the compression and the scale of the image is with the two different lenses. Here is another example. Notice the depth of the mountain scene in the first image compared to the layers of mountains in the second. Another thing you can take advantage of with the telephoto lens is that it needs a lot more light or it doesn't let as much light into the lens. And why is this an advantage? Well, if you want to get a longer exposure, then that can really help you. This is also helpful if you want to get a moving waterfall or something of the same type of thing. Another great shot here. I can, with the zoom, eliminate this fence and just get the silhouette of the tree. It's a really beautiful tree with the sky in the distance. Now, I've moved over because the sun is starting to peek out from the behind the clouds. Now, the other thing that a telephoto is great for is if you want to get images of the moon, it's uh, much easier to get the detail, especially if you're not working with a telescope or anything like that. But here, I am using a tree branch in the foreground and the sun and clouds in the background. If you want to, you can get a narrower depth of field with a longer lens. That means that the area of the image that will be in focus will be smaller at smaller f-stops. However, if I were to do that with this image, the sun and the clouds would have been out of focus. That was fun <laughs> and so cold, <laughs> time to get back. But I wanted to tell you when you're using a long lens that make sure you bring your tripod because you're probably going to need it. Like I said, a long lens requires more light because less light gets through it. So you're going to have 
slower shutter speeds, lower f-stops, and if it's not a very, very bright day, you're gonna need that uh, tripod. So, oh, I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer. And uh, yeah, <laughs> okay, time to warm up and start the day. Hope you all have a great day. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.